So hey, welcome back. All right. So uh, you're wondering what we got here, right? Well, what we got here, well, it's a razor, obviously, and I uh, got my little penguins over here. My little mascots. I'm moving them out of the way. You know, I've got this box and <clears throat> looks like a razor case, but it's not really a razor case at all. Actually, what I'm gonna do is gonna just show you this on camera. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about mid-range, you know, uh, Nakato, mid-range honing. You know, I'm, I'm deep into mid-range. Um, a lot of people just, you know, glance over it, sort of like, you know, flyover state mentality, you know. Um, most guys really, uh, they worry a lot about, you know, like, you know, which finishing stone that I have, like, how hard is it and how fine is it and blah, blah, blah. And uh, they're all valid considerations in and of their own right. Um, bevel, you know, to me is most important. Bevel set, the initial, uh, getting the geometry correct. And uh, then the follow-up is equally important. You know, it's kind of like building a house. Uh, if your foundation sucks, then it's going to fall down. Uh, but after that, um, got a little peek there. Uh, you know, you have to put up uh, the walls correctly otherwise you know your house sucks to live in and then finishing could sort of be like the roof you know and uh it keeps you comfortable it keeps you dry cool warm whatever All right so what's this uh, this is um sort of like a secret weapon uh, it's just like a wood box whatever i picked it up somewhere and uh you know most of you know i'm like you know got a ton of nagura and uh so this here is um, in my mid-range collection. Right? Uh, sorry about the glare from the overhead. I got some lighting problems. Promise I'll work on it. Not promising I'll solve it, <laughs> but I'll work on it. Anyway, and um, there are numbers of ways to handle your mid-range, and you know you could go from a bevel set. You can go to another coarse stone, like a you know you can go to Botan, and I do that, or you could go to you know, any number of uh, other songs like Amakusa or Binsway or, you know, stuff like that. Uh, some of those stones are safe to use. Some of them are not. Um, uh, Ikarishi seem to be fairly clean most of the time, but a lot of them are really junked up with um, bad deposits. Same with Amakusa, especially those red ones. They're terrible. Uh, Omura, you know, Omura hasn't been quarried in a long time. Um, it's like a sandstone. You have to be really careful there, too. You need a really high-grade Omura if you're going to hone a straight razor. You know, kitchen knives, you know, big honking blades, that's another story. But, you know, for our purposes, our blades are very fine, need a lot of finesse. Okay, so um, what do we have here? Well, you're probably wondering how I get them out of there, right? Like this. Boom. Right, and uh, what do we got? Let me move them up so a more in the center. All right, so um, starting from left to right, you know, I have uh, Haka Haka Akapin actually is what that is, and uh, th these are all sealed. Uh, this type of stone is so crazy soft, um, takes on so much water. That if you don't seal it, you're, you're just going to create, you know, dust you know, after a while. So you got to seal it. Um, after that, um, I have this piece of uh, Okuto Renge Suida. This is a brilliant piece. It's a little softer, but it still has hardness. But it's like a stupid fast cutter. And the particles in here, like, they're great follow-up to, say, working on a 1K Tracera. Or used in conjunction uh, with... Um, uh, another slurry stone, or whatever, but um, it, 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 it's very flexible is what I'm trying to say, okay? Aoto, this is very old Aoto. Um, this is from the heyday of Aoto. Uh, a lot of the stuff you see on the market now is crap, dried up crap rock. Um, every now and then you see some good stuff come out, and um, so it's not an entirely a lost cause, but if you get a dry, there's nothing, in my opinion, very few things worse than trying to hone on one of those dead, dry Aoto. Um, it's like the worst feeling under the blade. 
there's like no cutting power. You're on there for like all day. The stone just dishes. It soaks up stuff. The mud is ugly. It smells bad. This is not that. This is like a real high-end piece um, from, I don't know, a long time ago. Chu. Chu Nagura. Um, this is the stripe variant. It's a little faster. This is authentic Chu. It's not just some white rock cut out of the ground that's being sold as Chu. Um, some of you may have bought some of those turd Chu Nagura off of uh, eBay or something. I've tested a few. They're like completely pointless. They're like chalk with some kind of sand in it or something. I, I don't know. That's an extreme analogy. It's not really that, but, you know, compared to this, that's what it seems like. This is a very smooth cutting, um, mid-range. Um, this quality stone would be used by a sword polisher in a larger piece, actually, um, to follow the earliest stages and then would follow this with um, coma. You know, uh, I think Binsue is... Uh, stone before this I, I can't remember off the top of my head I'm tired and here um, we have a lovely piece of Ujigumari the real deal um, not just you know purple sweeter from some other hole in the ground uh, this is the real deal from oh here this is really really nice stone um, the polish it leaves is, is crazy. Um, I'm not really like one of those guys that puts on crazy uh, edges on his knives. Um, blades here get destroyed in my kitchen pretty quickly. But um, I have used this on uh, some of my better knives uh, to do a final finish. And it's been outstanding, um, not only in sharpness, but in, in look on the bevel too. The haze is like this dense, thick fog you can just fall into. For razors, um, I like to use it as a pre-finishing stage after um, doing an Agura progression. And it's like sort of a, a limbo state in there. And it's just to sort of like lay down a little bit of a, a haze to build up your final haze from your Tomo Nagura on. Uh, I also feel that it sort of like mellows the, uh, the edge a little bit, mellow isn't the right word, but sort of like tames it. Sometimes uh, when I hone, I get edges that are brutally sharp and, you know, they're fine. You know, that that's good. I, I love a laser, uh, a lightsaber. Um, I, I love that. But what I don't want is that tedious type of edge, like what you get from like diamond paste or something like that. Um, and this kind of like leaves the sharpness, but sort of chills it out somehow. I don't know. It's just, i sorry. I, you know, I don't get into SEM picks and spending countless days trying to come up with medical or scientific reasons why shit works. You know, I try stuff. I try it over and 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 over again. And I try it in all different ways, shapes, sizes, and forms. And, you know, I come up with um, some conjecture. And um, so what I do is, you know, um, I remember that this stone after this stone or whatever uh, does this thing. And so I commit that to memory. And um, then I roll with it, you know. Um, and uh, there's like a ton of guys on the Internet that like want to jump up and down and <clears throat> prove everything everybody else says is wrong because they all know the right way, but I, I don't know who knows what way um, other than me knowing my way. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, I keep them in that box because I like to keep them together. These are like the chosen ones. These are the ones I rely on. Um, I baby them. I really do. Um, hence the box, you know. <laughs> and... Uh, may seem a little ridiculous, but I like to keep my stones clean, I like to keep them all in one pay place. I like to know where stuff is when I want to use it. I don't want to have to go looking for it. I want to be able to open that box, and if there's a spot open, I know one got away, and maybe it's on a windowsill, or maybe I left it in the refrigerator or something. I don't know, but then I go find it. All right, so... Um, now, I wouldn't use these like in a progression, really. I might use one after the other, but, you know, generally speaking, <clears throat> they all have like their own unique spot in some kind of like whatever. Um, uh, another progression. You know, not a progression of these is what I'm trying to say. 
All right, so, you know, I got this Haka. I mean, this thing is crazy soft. It's like, <laughs> it's like hard, dry mud. I mean, it just, it brings up slurry, like, boom. You know, and sometimes, um, this is Haka Akapen. Haka's a location. Akapen is a lair. Um, <clears throat> and for me, yeah, uh, from the Haka location, this Akapen stuff, especially the red thing, man, it, it's just like crazy good. All right, um, there's a little, I'm just going to hone here and just tell you about the feedback. I, I'm not really doing anything. Um, from experience, I can tell you that this stuff with uh, a lot of, not, not a lot, but some work, uh, will get really thick muddy pretty quickly. Um, it's not fast. No, it's slow. Um, it, it's a mid-range stone. And it's, it's kind of like dead in the middle. If it, it's, you know, to follow a, um, what do you call it? A 1K Josera, some other bevel settings now. With this, um, you, you kind of salmon swimming upstream. You would really want to have one of the other ones if you're going to put it in that spot. This is something I would throw down if I was like leaving a 3K synth and I want to erase that synthetic fingerprint. Or even a 5K, you know, um, depending on which 5K we're talking about, I guess. But like, I I, I wouldn't use this after my 4K um, Falcon because that stone is like, you know, very very fine. And, um, going here would be going too far backwards initially, and I don't know if I would ever really recover. But if I was using like, you know, one of those Nova Thomas or I said three K Sarah, yeah, for sure. Come in here and uh, just work this stuff and uh, take out the striations from the synth. And uh, you know, for me, an edge is the sum of its parts. So to remove as much of the synthetic personality of the edge early on as possible is, is a really good thing. Anyway, so, you know, that's just a little bit about Haka. Haka um, in, in real life, if I was like really honing here, um, and I was trying to like get the job done, I would make a lot more slurry, and I would work it a lot longer. As, like I said, it's slow. All right, um, which one I want to do next? Yeah, Aoto. Um, this is great stuff. Uh, this will do everything the Haka does. I find this one to be a little faster and, you know, maybe a little finer. Uh, well, at least it's finer at the end of the game. Okay, this stuff breaks down really, really, really well. Right? If I had a big block of this and I was working like a chef's knife on it or an Akiri or a Diva or something, um, I would be like ecstatic with the edge when I was done because that mud would just break down and you're coming in at about, you know, don't like say Keith said Aoto is 5K. Don't say that. But with this stone, I have to make an equivalent here to like explain. I would say you're in like the 5K zone. Okay. Um, you like when you're done. Starting off, maybe a little bit. It's a little harder than my Haka. A little less prone to taking on water than the Haka. You see it getting some slurry up is a little more difficult. It's partially it's a partial indicator of it being a little finer. They're both good stones. I could interchange them, you know, it's just depends on the mood and how things are going and what base stone I have. Um, This has a little bit of a silky feeling. Slurry is obviously not as pretty, but right out of the gate, your feedback is telling you that, well, my feedback is telling me that, you know, it's finer. You know, from experience, I know also that this is a very slow stone to work with. So if I was like really looking to like throw down like 
Hey, Auto Edge on a blade. I come off of a 3K Chosera, right? And I said, okay, you know what? I, I want to, you know, get into it with Auto today. Make a pile of mud. Might even make it a little thicker and heavier than what you see here. Not too much. <clears throat> if you make it too thick, you will kill your edge with this stuff. Okay, you will just destroy it if you make it too thick. But maybe a little bit more. You know, there's a difference between thicker and more. Right? More is a lot. Thicker is dense. Density and volume are two different things. So you got to get in touch with that. So maybe a little tiny bit denser and a whole lot more on the stone. So I have a lot to work with. If I have a big stone, I might <clears throat> take some of the slurry I haven't started to work with and push it to the end and work up in the front and then just sort of like bring it in as I go along so I can keep the cutting action alive. And um, yeah, maybe I'll do a video on that someday. I kind of have to explain. Anyway, a um, little bit silkier. Again, it's in that mid-range zone, so it's, you know, after your bevel set. I would probably choose this for a Sheffield, because I find, for whatever reason, I like my weight and butchers really love this Aoto. They love it more than they love the Haka. And that's not like, you know, a rule. It's just an observation. So if I was coming off of a 1K with a weight, and I wanted to do that, like, natural fingerprint swap thing, <clears throat> I would probably grab the Aoto before the hawker. So what would I use the hawker for? Well, you know, about anything else. Um, I, and I might try them in conjunction. I might use both one after the other. Uh, there are no rules, you know. You know, I'm, I'm working from feedback and I do some visual inspection. And, you know, that's the Uchigamari. I want to leave that for last. Um, you know, it's... Uh, you got to hone by your heart, you know, you, you got to, you got to feel and you got to sense and you kind of have to surrender to that if you want to use natural stones, because you got to let the stones speak to you. You have to understand what they're telling you. Um, you want to have a lot of continuous, uh, consistent success. You have to kind of get dialed into it. And the only way to do it is by doing it. You know, I can sit here and wax poetic for the rest of the night. And if you're not doing it, you're not going to get it. And, you know, I'm still getting it. It's not like I got it. You know, I, I learn every day. I hone every day. I'm always learning new stuff. I'm always talking to people that, like, do these things. And sometimes it's knife guys. Sometimes it's sword guys. It's just emailing with a uh, certified polisher here in the States. And, uh, you know, he's shopping a Tenju of mine. And we were talking about, you know, technique and stone type. And, you know, it was nice. I got to talk about it, you know. Tenju at that level, as opposed to just saying, oh, here's a Tenju and it costs whatever dollars, you know, um, it was nice. Um, he's been doing it for a long time. He really gets it. Now this, this is, um, this is a really special stone, really special. I mean, just slurring it, you know, it's like, wow. Um, kind of wish I had a whole big fat giant piece of that to, uh, sharpen stuff on. It was a broken corner of a uh, rather large, I think, uh, 40 size uh, stone that uh, somebody sent me after they uh, dropped it. They were like working on a uh, shrine or something, and it was an accident and got busted off. And asked me if I wanted it. And I said, Yeah. And I worked on it on a lapping plate to get the shape, and then I sealed it. So, this is Okudo Renge Sweden. And it is fast. <laughs> okay. And it breaks down really, really fine. Okay. And it doesn't break down fast. That's another quality I'll talk about. You know. But, um, yet another video opportunity, I guess. Anyway, um, th this cuts. This will cut anything, any type of razor steel. I want, you know. Most of the stuff I run into is pretty garden variety, like Sheffields and Solingen, so maybe I don't know what I'm talking about across the board as far as all races are concerned, but, you know, my stuff, I mean, it just, it goes great. It really goes great. 
Um, I can come in with this after a level set. I can come in after 3K. I can come in after 5K. As long as I have a really hard base stone, I'm good. So you might be thinking, why don't I just have that one stone? Well, you know, it, it, it's not really about, you know, that for me. I, I like having these and I like choosing them. And it, even though I know I have this beautiful Renge Suite and I can rely on it to do like almost anything I ever wanted to do, you know, I love the Aoto, I love the Haka, and I will use them when I want to, when I'm feeling it, you know, and uh, it's kind of hard to explain, I guess, uh, Western thinking uh, doesn't really apply here. It's like, I don't know if any of you guys got like a lot of tools, but I, you know, I, I must have like 40 screwdrivers, right? How many screwdrivers do you need? Well, they all pretty much work, and they all pretty much do the same thing. And aside from, you know, the different size tips or what have you, um, you know, basically they're all screwdrivers. 99% <laughs> of the time, when I got to do something, it's like this one screwdriver that I grab. But not all the time, just most of the time. And you might say the one I grab is my favorite. And maybe it is, but, you know, there's others in there that mean a lot to me. You know, a couple from my dad, you know, this stamp bell system. You know, I worked for them back in the 60s. And those were my first tools. He gave me his worn-out pieces from his toolkit. And, uh, yeah, they're not great, but they work. And a couple of them, I, I like, true the tips up so I can still use them. And... Anyway, I'm not talking about screwdrivers here. I'm talking about Nagura. Um, my point, yeah, I have one. Um, it, it's not really just about like, you know, ABC, one, two, three, tab A, sloppy, do this, do that, five minutes here, three minutes there, 40 strokes here, 50 strokes there. Yeah, that's nuts to me, okay? Owning is more of an emotional experience. It's, it's kind of spiritual in a way. You know, I hesitate to say that because you're all going to think I'm whack, but... When I'm honing at night, it's just like you know, me and the tunes, or maybe no tunes, or maybe it's just the white noise in the air conditioner. You know, I, 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 I fall into this stone, like this spot. It's like a black hole. I'm in there. It's the same when I do long range shooting. It's me and a ball at three, six, a hundred, uh, excuse me, <laughs> a thousand yards. It's me and the ball. It's me and the wind and the ball at, you know, everything over a hundred yards. Um, even at 100 yards. Anyway, it's but you know I tune out. I mean nothing happens. I could be sitting there at my point, and you know, like literally bombs could be going off, and I, I'm not going to notice because I'm watching the blades of grass. I'm watching the, fruit, the trees, the leaves. I'm watching the birds. I'm looking at the mirage. I'm zoned in on my target. Same thing here. It's the same thing, you know photography my whole career shooting same type of thing you get on location people used to call me the ghost get in get out you wouldn't even know I was there I just float through the crowd and get totally zoned into the space and the moment and the energy and everything else same thing here so you know I guess it's foolish to think everyone's gonna go there but I think it's a great place to go and try going there and might find some enjoyment might find some peace of mind you know sure as hell beats going on reddit and arguing with morons um <laughs> i was over on reddit the other day i looked at the thread and i was just appalled at the way people were like talking to each other and i know reddit has great subreddits where people don't do that it just happened to be a bad one um, or bad moment, whatever. It's just, you know, whatever. I don't need to argue with people. Rubbing steel on a rock, you know. I want to get that edge as thin as possible, but as durable as possible for its thinness. I want to make it as comfortable to my skin. I want to make it the cutting efficiency as high as it can be. You know, it's a challenge, it's a craft. You know, we're not born with that skill, we have to work on it. And for me, 
skill is great, but the Zen is even better. I mean, I would, even if I wasn't good at this, I would still do it, you know, um, because I, I enjoy the Zen so much. It's just, it means so much to me. You know? Anyway, so anyway, that's my romantic blathering for the evening. Um, sure, a lot of you are like, well, I just want to shave. Yeah, that's cool too, you know, whatever. I'm talking about me here. If you think what I'm saying is nuts, I don't know, make your own video. <laughs> Whatever, I'm not being rude, it's just... Alright, maybe it was a little rude. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I'm not trying to be rude, that's my point. Right. Um, the Chew. The Chew is awesome. Chew is fast. The chew can follow a 1K. The chew can follow a 3K. The chew can hold its own with most 5Ks. Um, it's fast. It's fast, but um, like this one is mild. It doesn't leave deep striations at all. Um, honing with it is a joyous event most of the time. It's like it's the missing Macaulay girl, you know. Um, not that there's anything missing in the system of Botan, Tenju, Bajiro, and Coma. I'm not saying that. I'm, it's just kind of like, I wonder, like, why Asano never stamped Chew? <laughs> anyway, and you got to admit, man, the, the, those stripes are hot. <laughs> Love those stripes. Anyway, um, it's fast, it cuts. It's a little grainy. Does not have any of that chocolate ball sensation at all. There is a little bit of tiny like graininess to the feedback that lets you know like what's going on. It's like no no fooling around, right? Just big neon flashing signs. Because when that graininess goes away, it's either time to re-slurry or time to move to the next stage. But it'll take a while to get there because it's not fast. None of these are exceptionally fast on by the way. Well, Dochi Gomori is kind of fast, but it's not like, you know, crazy fast. Anyway, like I said, the graininess here is uh, going to hang out for a while. It's a, it's a slow stone that breaks down slow. And what's nice about that is when you're working your mid-range, you know, hopefully you've spent time doing your bevel set, and you have this slow-acting abrasive that's going to hang out for a long time. Not a long time, it's not like, you know, days. And you're almost assured of getting, like, this wonderful, perfect hit all across the edge, you know. And you look at this edge on a scope after you, like, work these higher end mid-range stones, man, they look good. So you're wondering like, what's the difference between these and the Macau and the Gura? Well, sometimes I put these in between the Macau and the Gura, sort of like making a, like a deli sandwich, you know? You open the bread, that could be the 1K. Come in after that and you wanna like, I want to put down some bologna or roast beef. And that could be like, you know, both of them. And you want to put some cheese or whatever, and then you have like the rest of them, you know. And you're not quite done. You know, you're not ready to go to like, you know, the pickle and the olive yet. So, I might stop, you know, after Majiro and go to Chu. Oh, crap, I just got, <laughs> just got Swarth up on, uh, well, there's a good indicator of, stone cutting. Um, yeah, not after coma, though, because coma is used for taking down uh, chew. So it would be, you know, any stone, but 
uh, you know, after any stones, but not after coma, not after toma or anything like that. Uh, wonderful, wonderful in the girl. Okay? Just love it. Now, um, I should wipe this off one last time before I have another romantic gushing moment because this would you good morning. I tell you, a whole bunch of people are like before, like I, I got a hook. I, I have a connection now for Uchi. But, uh, people giving me little finger stones and pieces, and you know, my buddy Nelson just gave me a, a pretty decent piece, actually, you know, rather high end piece of haka, uh, the grayer type, whereas this is like sort of purpley, and that was a good piece, you know, but for the most part. I wasn't impressed. It was just like, you know what, all I'm getting is look. You know, I'm you know, maybe on a different type of blade, but for a razor all I was getting was look. And um you know, I said that in forums and you know, some people started jumping up and down like they do in forums, you know, it's like it's like a circus sometimes. It's like, you know what did someone just say to me? Ah oh, yeah, forums it's all about people performing for the masses. <laughs> and, you know, I don't know that I totally agree with that, but I get the sentiment, man. Um, you know, that's what I experienced. I try like six or eight, ten, twelve pieces, and they were all like, meh, bleh. But this and a whole bunch of others that I've picked up, it's kind of expensive, so I, I don't get a lot of it. <clears throat> and a lot of it, you know, typical of Uchi, um, comes through with these these red lines. And picking and choosing and testing, uh, man, it's enough to make you nuts. So, you know, the, it pays off in the end, but the initial investment between buying the stuff and then working with it and then figuring it out. Like I said, this is, uh, I don't even know if I mentioned this is Haka. Uh, not Haka, excuse me, Hato. Uh, as opposed to Jito. Jito's harder, you know, in the world of polishing, you use them in different places on the blade to bring out different patterns, Chigani, Hagani, and, you know. Polishing, Kisaki, Hamon, whatever. It is all science to all of that. You know, uh, we raising razor owners, we, we we don't really need to go there. Um, it's nice to know about it. I read about it, and you know, there are days I feel like I could probably sit down and polish a sword, and then there are other days I feel like that's never gonna happen. <laughs> anyway, um, this stuff is like cream. It's like cream with this hint of grain and a little tiny hint of like ball bearings too and it's a little disarming at first because you know you want it to be all like you know, perfectly like wet velvet uh, uh, you know wet velvet smooth but no it's not like that you know and then you start you're honing like I'm honing now and I have like Feels like a couple of mini ball bearings are under there, and then it feels like, like maybe, I don't know, some wet dust or something, you know. Uh, and again, and it does not break down fast. You have to work it. You have to learn how. Well, I had to learn how it likes to be worked. What kind of pressure to use, and you can feel a change under the blade. You can actually have a lot of fun playing with it. Okay, so like right now I'm like driving a little bit on the blade and so I'm putting some pressure into it and bam, like whoosh, all the ball bearings are gone. They're not really gone. To make an analogy, it's like when they start out, they're like ball bearings, but they have some flat sides to them. <laughs> and like right now, they got real small and they're perfectly round. They're actually going to be completely gone in like no time. That's a feeling. That's not a fact. That's not exactly a scientific rendition of what's going on. I'm just imparting 
the sensations that I experience when I use this stuff. So like maybe if you ever get some and you're like, oh yeah, yeah, I remember that guy who was talking about this. All right, that's cool. You know, that's all this is. I'm not, you know, not selling this stuff. Those stones I'll never leave in my home. I'll be buried with them. Um, I'm not, you know, telling you that this is the best way in the world to hone. I, I'm just saying this is like something I do sometimes, you know. Um, I, I like to let people know that honing is, it's more than just sitting down and, and doing, you know, 1, 2, 1K, 3K, 8K, 12K, you know, strop and then done. Like, I, I don't know, that, that just reminds me so much of shaving with like, you know, a, a Mach 3. You know, where it just becomes like by rote, where it's like automatic, where, you know, there's no, there's no thinking, there's no involvement, there's no, you're not in touch with anything. It's like the difference between like, I don't know, buying, you know, having your food delivered from McDonald's or <clears throat> going to the farm and picking it yourself, you know, it's like that kind of a thing. So um, maybe you're not into that. Fine. Cool. I am, and so I do this. Anyway, great stuff, uh, great way to work the mid-range without going out and buying, you know, huge chunks of these stones to work on. Um, and if you do that, like you can do that, like, you know, I could buy a giant chew and I can work on it. It works completely differently. Um, you know, the um, even the end results aren't going to be the same. I actually prefer to work this way. Um, which uh, doesn't hold true when I'm working with Macau and Nagura because I, I love to set bevels like right on the bow tent. Um, so anyway, it's a preference thing, you know. Uh, you get to choose which way you want to go with this stuff, which is, you know, absolutely brilliant. You know, when you think about it, it's like, you know, there, there are no rules. There are absolutely no rules. You can do whatever you want. And um, generally speaking, if you learn, you know what they will if you learn them, you'll get where you want to go. Almost like no matter which route you pick, you just have to learn like the roadways. Anyway, um, mid-range, mid-range stuff. Uh, think about it. Check it out. It's all about having fun.